What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. Today, we'll be looking at when attacks have single or double target modifiers for damage. It might seem trivial to go over this for most veterans in the scene, but I think it's good to have a refresher once in a while, especially with how often newer players misinterpret it. Understanding when the doubles modifier is active can be crucial to your gameplay, especially for knowing if your spread move or single target attack does more damage to the opponent. Spread moves are extremely important in VGC play. Hitting two opponents at once opens up the opportunity for heavy damage to both targets, which is why attacks like Earthquake and Heat Wave are inherently good choices in doubles play. To balance the ability to hit multiple Pokémon, Spread moves have their damage reduced to 0.75 times of its original power, or equivalently, 3 fourths. For example, suppose an Earthquake from Landris does 100 damage in a single battle. With the spread move modifier applied in double battles, this Landris would do 75 damage with Earthquake, everything else being the same. The 0.75 modifier applies to all Pokémon Earthquake is hitting, including allies. In a related way, Reflect, Light Scream, and Aurora Veil also have different modifiers depending on whether it is considered singles or doubles play. For singles, damage is halved, and for doubles, damage is multiplied by a factor of 2,703 divided by 4,096, which is approximately 0.66 or two-thirds. In VGC, screens always use the doubles modifier, so you don't have to worry about your attacks doing less damage if a Ninetales sets Aurora Veil in a clever way or anything. With the basics out of the way, let's go over what it means to be a target. In Pokémon, a target is a Pokémon slot that has not fainted. If a Pokémon has fainted, it's not a target anymore. Here's an example of what I mean. Landorus T just used Earthquake to KO its own teammate and Snorlax's partner here. As you can see from the damage calc here on the screen, the 76 damage that Snorlax took from Earthquake here falls into the expected range of damage we see from the damage calculator. Specifically, it was either the 6th or 7th roll. Now when Landorus uses Earthquake again, you see that Snorlax took 100 damage, which is higher than the rolls the calculator gives us. Why? Because Earthquake only has one target here, this is being treated as singles play. Switching the calculator to singles shows us the damage we saw Earthquake actually do to Snorlax, 100, which is the 5th roll in this case. This extra damage came from Earthquake being a single target attack versus Snorlax, meaning it was the only target on the field. Let's go through some misconceptions that some players have with knowing when their spread moves are single or double target. First, protecting your ally on an Earthquake does not make your attack single target, as you can see from the damage Snorlax takes here. This applies the other way around too. If Snorlax's ally uses Protect here, Snorlax takes double target Earthquake damage. In a similar situation with Heat Wave, Heat Wave will be calculated with single target damage here, because Snorlax has no partner. And in a similar way to Earthquake, if Snorlax's ally uses Protect, Snorlax takes double target damage from Heat Wave. Second, having an immunity to Earthquake does not make your attack single target, again, as you can see from the damage here. Just like with Protect, this applies if your opponent has a Pokémon with Levitate or is otherwise immune as well. Third, being semi-invulnerable, such as with Fly or Skydrop, does not make your attack single target. Again, to reinforce what I said earlier, a target is defined as a non-fainted Pokémon. Since Tapu Koko is still in the air, it counts as a target for the purposes of calculating damage on Snorlax. Fourth, if Landorus's partner and Snorlax's partner faint before Landorus can use Earthquake, then Earthquake is single target, because both Tapu Koko and Tapu Fini have fainted here, leaving Snorlax as the only target for Landorus's Earthquake. And finally, if both opponents were KO'd this turn, and Landorus uses Earthquake on the ally Snorlax, Earthquake is again single target, as it is the only target on the field for Earthquake to hit, despite Snorlax and Landorus being allies. Let's look at some applications of this. 
Suppose I'm about to send in my Choice Scarf Landorus T, and I need it to knock out my opponent's weakened Landorus T before it hits my Charizard with Rock Slide. My Landorus knows Earthquake, Rock Slide, Super Power, and U-Turn. What's the strongest attack I can use versus the opposing Landorus to try to pick up this knockout? Pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer. Obviously, Earthquake won't work here because Landorus is immune, and U-Turn is too weak. Surprisingly, however, Super Power is the strongest option Landorus has here. Consider it like this. Rock Slide has 75 base power, which multiplied by 0.75 times is 56.25. Meanwhile, Super Power has 120 BP. Divided by 2 for the resistance gives us 60 base power, which is greater than Rock Slide's effective BP. To back this up, here are the damage calculator's rolls for each attack. This logic can be applied in other situations as well. For example, Tapu Koko's Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain does more to opposing Tapu Koko than a Spread Dazzling Gleam would. As for a VGC-17 example, Torkoal's Eruption, when it is at full power, will do more damage than Solar Beam to an opposing Garchomp, despite Eruption being a resisted hit. While there might be other reasons for choosing to use a Spread move, normally because you want to hit their other Pokémon as well, understanding your most damaging option can be critically important to win games where you need that extra push of damage. One interesting note is that both Trainer Tower and Pokemon Showdown's damage calculators do not support having a doubles screen modifier calculated with a single target spread move at the same time. This could come up if, say, Snorlax was under Aurora Veil against Landorus T in a 1v1, and Landorus T used Earthquake. However, to get around this, simply change another single target attack with similar properties to your spread move to be that spread move's base power. With our example with Earthquake, I'll just use a 100 base power drill run as a substitute. As you can see, the 100 base power drill run reflects the damage that Snorlax took from this Landorus's Earthquake in-game. That's all for today's Mechanics Monday. Although I'm sure many of you were familiar with today's topic, I hope it nevertheless reinforced the fundamentals of how spread damage works, so you can make educated decisions in assessing damage. As I make these videos, I'm doing research for more complex topics in future episodes of Mechanics Monday, so please bear with me as I continue testing. Like always, if you have any suggestions for mechanics you'd like to see, please leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, have a good one.